Well, Runway have released Gen 4, marking about eight months since the release of Gen 3. And I mean, a lot has changed since then. So today we're gonna take a deep dive into Gen 4 and it has a lot going for it. Now granted, not all of which is available at launch. We will of course go over all of that, plus you know the standard battery of tests, community outputs, and best practices. All right, make sure your seatbelts are fastened, your chair is in the upright position, we are off to the runway. So Runway's update to their video model is obviously boasting you know, better fidelity and output quality, but more importantly, they came out swinging with consistency in character, location, and color grading, stating, Gen 4 can utilize visual references combined with instructions to create new images and videos, utilizing consistent styles, subjects, locations, and more, and all without the need for additional fine tuning. Runway did of course showcase this, releasing a number of short films available over on their platform where you can check out sort of the consistency thing in action. And overall, I have to say that things are looking very promising here. Now that said, that particular feature is not shipping at launch. That's okay though, there's plenty of other really great stuff to go over here, and I don't think it'll be long before we see it. In the meantime, Gen 4 as it stands on its own like today is a pretty solid model. Interestingly, thus far at least, there is no text to video. Uh, I know that's not a huge issue for most of you. In fact, most of you prefer that there isn't a text to video. Uh, it kind of is working a little bit like how we saw early VO2 in that it's text to image to video. Now it is important to note that standard image to video applies here as well. You can bring in a mid journey image or a flux image and run it in gen four as well. So we will take a look at both sides of that, of course, kicking off with our man in the blue business suit who we last saw hanging out at a campfire in the desert with a wolf. Well, it looks like it's the next morning and our duo have discovered an abandoned mining town. Uh, initial image for this was generated in frames. We'll talk about that in just one second. Overall, I think that the you know output here looks pretty solid though. Um, walk cycle looks really good. There is a little bit of a stutter step coming up right here. Yeah, about eight seconds in. Uh, but other than that, I mean, I think that things are looking really pretty solid here. As mentioned for our initial image input, I did utilize Runway's frames, which I do find to be a pretty good image generator. I'm sure you're gonna get a couple of like bunk results here and there, like, like this guy with this chonker of a wolf or maybe just a really tiny guy. But overall, I do find it to be a very solid image generator. I did a whole video on it. It'll be linked down below. Now, just to give you an idea of where we are in the Runway Pantheon, uh, I did generate up an image of uh, a guy in a business business suit walking through uh, a destroyed apocalyptic London. I promise we're gonna get past business suit guys in just a minute. This is roughly based on a music video that I did at the launch of Runway's Gen 3, utilizing the Radiohead song, Exit Music for a Film. So taking this guy and just hitting the use button automatically brings you over to the video prompt. Running him, this looks pretty solid. Again, this is a 10 second shot. We aren't getting very much of a stutter step here. Background stays very consistent. Now let's roll this back to Gen 3 where I think that kind of like floating foot treadmill look plus a little bit more of that stutter step becomes a lot more apparent. I will say, I gotta give it up to Gen 3 though, like structurally background wise, things look you know pretty consistent and coherent. It does kind of have that Gen 3 look of just looking a little too, I don't know, sharp and artificial. To be honest, I think where things end up really flying is when you reframe in Gen 4 for 21.9, um, you know, basically bypassing the feet issue. And just for the historical record, I do think it's important to take that image output and run it in Gen 2. Uh, yeah, that is four seconds of glorious old school AI video wonk. Don't you worry though, that wonk isn't completely gone yet. So I wanted to see how frames and Gen 4 would interact in terms of text. We've definitely seen, you know, morphing, bleeding text in the past. So uh, heading over to our woman in the red dress who has been feeling a little forlorn about leaving the man in the blue business suit for, you know, getting too many jaywalking tickets. Uh, she is apparently standing in the city in the rain in front of a sign that says no jaywalking. All four images came out okay. There's a little bit of garbled text on the no here. Uh, some kerning issues over here. But, you know, between these two images, they, they looked pretty decent. I ended up running this one, which came out, I don't know, kind of okay. There are some like messy spots in here, but overall, I think there's also a lot to like here. Um, things that are problematic, 
for one, the size of the cab as it drives by uh, definitely looks a little bit too on the large size. Uh, our woman in the red dress, I don't know what's going on with the material that she's wearing, but it looks like it's, I guess it's like, it almost looks like it's waterproof there. But as for things that I like, I mean, I think that the overall the kind of ambience of the city is really, really well done here. All of the background characters, definitely look very natural. I did end up running a wide angle version of this and I was actually really impressed with this one. Um, there is, yeah, again, a problem in that jaywalking is spelled wrong here, but there's also a lot to like here, both in just in terms of the composition and again, the overall movement and aliveness of the city. Admittedly, look, AI video is gonna AI video. For example, uh, this background character here is wearing you know, kind of like an umbrella hat, although I have seen people wearing those. Uh, and then over here, we have like this giant umbrella. That said, this shot runs 10 seconds. So there's definitely plenty that you can mine from here. And again, if you have problems with umbrella hat person, you could always roto them out. And just to showcase a little more AI video wonk, uh, we did end up with this as an alternate, man, those tears. And look, I am not bagging on Gen 4 here at all. There is a lot that I like in this generation. I mean, yes, the fact that AI video wonk isn't completely gone, that brings me joy. But I mean, also, I mean, everything that's happening in the background there, the fact that we got no jaywalking correct, the fact that she is emoting correctly, although with, you know, giant uh, water geyser tears, all great. I just always think it's important to note that, you know, despite hype reels, you know, things are not going to be one shot perfect. Some of it may require some re-rolling, rethinking, and possibly some elbow grease afterwards. I do also want to note that one of my favorite runway features, uh, expand video, it works, but it doesn't really work with Gen 4 just quite yet. For example, if we run the expand here, you'll note that um, we can't actually use Gen 4 itself. Running that, we end up with this, which I think does markedly show the differences between Gen 3 and Gen 4. There's also this weird, like, kind of like color gamma shift that's happening. I'm not sure if that is just this generation. So yeah, I mean, expand Gen 4 at your own risk. Now, in terms of fight action choreography, that is something that I'm always futzing with. Uh, Kung Fu still not quite working, but I did want to try utilizing the black and white preset in frames for kind of a, you know, like Raging Bull inspired shot. And we ended up with this, which overall is not that bad. Yeah, that first right hook does not look like it has very much weight behind it, but still, I mean, everything is kind of holding a lot more coherently than we usually see in a sequence like this. Obviously, we're still a bit far off from like Jackie Chan in his prime scenes, but still, you know, it's coming along. But by far the most interesting of my text to image to video tests was uh, with our noir detective here. Granted, there's a bit, this is not perfect. There's, this is actually a little bit on the sloppy side. Um, for one, again, we do see that investigate is uh, spelled pretty wrong there. The prompt here is that a femme fatale enters the office. Now, again, there are problems as she just sort of phased through that front door or she's a ghost. Uh, but I think the important thing here is that this showcases that Gen 4 is capable of introducing, you know, new novel things into a shot and can do so contextually. I mean, this character does look accurate to the scene. She is in black and white. She is, you know, appropriately dressed as a femme fatale. Um, to note, in this example where I took this same video prompt but started with a different frame, this one much more inspired by, you know, traditional 1940s era film noir, um, we can see here that as our femme fatale enters, again, this isn't a perfect output, but um, again, she is much more contextual to that era of femme fatale. Now, granted, I don't know if the studios would have allowed her to go that va va voom on the dress, but still, I think if anything, this showcases why the new reference feature is going to be such a big deal. At baseline, it seems to function much in the same way that Pika's ingredients or Kling's elements works, in that you can take a number of references of images and the video model will kind of blend them all together. In particular, I've had, I would say like middling success with Kling. Sometimes it's great, sometimes not so much. Where Runways differs, it appears that you'll be taking your reference images and then first generating a frame up in, well, frames. That is an important step because if my suspicions are correct, and this is something that I discussed in uh, my production breakdown on the bridge where I went over uh, a little hack in VO2. The idea is that within images generated in ImageN3, uh, there's some sort of latent space baked into it that VO2 can understand, all of which adds up to creating a bit of a world model, a very small world model granted, but a world model nonetheless. 
We'll take a deeper look, of course, when this feature is released. But, you know, I tend to think that this is how they're kind of pulling off these consistent locations and consistent character, multiple angle type shots. In the meantime, sliding over to image to video, I do want to point out that, you know, you don't have to get overly complex with your prompts as well. Uh, simple language does seem to work pretty well. Uh, in this case, the prompt here was she walks up to the man and they begin talking. And we end up with this as an output, all of which looks really solid, stays very coherent. Uh, indeed, she walks up, they begin discussing. There is a weird explosion that happens in the background. Um, but, you know, for the most part, followed instructions completely. I believe that conversation is something along the lines of, I thought you were going to bring the bullets. No, I thought you were bringing the bullets. You can, of course, go completely promptless, and the model seems to be pretty good at figuring out, you know, contextually what should happen. For example, here, uh, where she turns and walks away, which is kind of what you would expect. A um, couple of notes here that I do like the fact that as she walks past here, we get motivated light, like the light source actually changes because of that open door. It's supposed to be a really bright light in there. Uh, and she's like kind of holding a bunch of envelopes, maybe bills, but they actually don't vanish. I really had expected them to, to kind of like just, you know, teleport away as we often see with generations like this. I do take some issue with the red hair tie, does not go with that dress at all, but you know, hey, again, I didn't prompt here. Pushing the model a little bit further, I wanted to see how it would do with like a number of faces. Um, this is an image that we generated up, I wanna say it was in Ideogram 2.0, it might've been over in Recraft. I mean, they're all blurring together, I'm not, I'm not sure. Regardless, um, you know, Running this through Gen 4, uh, we end up with, I mean, a pretty solid output. Everybody has something to do, which I do appreciate. Um, we do get, if you can see here at the beginning of the video, uh, a little bit of reflection of the coffee cup coming into the uh, astronaut's helmet. That's very impressive. Acting is actually not too bad. Fingers are actually staying very consistent, not morphing all over the place. I'd say like these four characters probably are sort of doing the most. Um, I will note that there is a bit of a problem with uh, our woman with the blue hair here. At one point or another, we do get some like weird blinking eyes. Uh, that seems to be something that I have seen a few times on image to video tests. That said, I am pretty hopeful that that will be worked out in an update. Here is a grandma with a flamethrower because, well, grandma with a flamethrower. Why, why, why wouldn't you prompt for a grandma with a flamethrower? Look at how much fun she's having. Image styles and aesthetics do seem to hold pretty well in Gen 4's image to video. Uh, this was a restyle on the character of Tuesday Sinclair that I think we ran in Magnific. Yeah, this was in Magnific. Uh, and then when we run this with a simple like zoom out or dolly out, uh, we end up with this, which, yeah, I mean, that holds together very nicely. There is a little bit of like this design tiny gack that just kind of hangs there in the air. But again, that was in the initial image as well. So Gen 4 was clearly like, I don't know what to do with it. So it's just going to hang out there. Finally, rounding out my test with our cyberpunk woman with long white hair. Uh, this was generated in Recraft. Uh, running this, the I really like the motion here, but there definitely is like a lot of like stuttery frame issues that are happening here. Um, once again, we see that the face kind of becomes a mess here and there. Uh, but again, overall, really like the energy. As a note, runway is outputting around 720p, dependent on aspect ratio, obviously. Uh, you can also upscale to 4K. That said, the 4K upscales are not creative upscalers. Um, this is the 4K upscale. All of the problems are still inherently there. Uh, it's just bigger. Now, one thing you could do is take that Gen 4 output and run it through runways restylize although you know you would now kick down to gen 3 uh, and you know to be honest it solves some problems it introduces others um and then ultimately because it's uh gen 3's restylize we are now limited to 16 by 9. still if anything i think this really showcases how exciting it will be when restyle uh hits gen 4. Moving over to some community outputs, Nicholas Newbert showcases the you know character consistency thing. Now Nicholas works at Runway, so he's able to utilize this function. We don't have it again yet, um, but you know I think that this very much showcases essentially what the Gen 4 model is capable of. I really like that sort of overhead crane shot there. Um, again, character, location, all staying very consistent. Our pal Tech Hollow really blew me away with this shot, uh, presumably a an actual selfie here. And then running that through Gen 4 um, ended up with this. Um, that's awesome. That's, that's really great. Alex takes my text 
tests, that's always really hard to say, uh, to the next level, creating some animated title sequences, um, very much showcasing, yeah, the model is totally capable of doing these sorts of things. I don't know if these are all movies that Alex is working on, but uh, I do want to see Nightshade Manor. This frame does not exist, gave us some atmospheric vibe checking uh, with these shots inspired by the upcoming Netflix show, El Eternata. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. That's actually going to be very cool. Uh, high recommend. Haven't seen it yet. Still highly recommending it. International action star Dave Clark gives us exploding spaceships because, you know, exploding spaceships. Uh, I actually think that this looks really great. Um, we have definitely seen in the past exploding spaceships or exploding ships tend to really decohere quite a bit. And you just end up with a lot of like, I don't know, artifacting all over the place. This is actually really holding up very well. Tom Likes Robots gives us this really nice diorama with like a heavy tilt shift on it. You know, obviously very Van Gogh inspired. I mean, this looks so great. Um, I mean, if anything, I think that these are the types of things that currently right now, I mean, are one of the best use cases for AI generated video. And finally, Eleanor gives us this, you know, very stylized racing sequence uh, put together in 20 minutes. I mean, that is kind of nuts. Um, yeah, this looks great. Overall, I definitely have to say Runway definitely cooked for Gen 4 and there's still more coming. I mean, obviously there is the much touted reference feature, but even more than that, I mean, I presume that there will be updates to expand act one, uh, first frame, last frame, and restylize to name a few. I'll definitely be keeping an eye out for all of those features and I will let you know as soon as they drop. Meanwhile, I think Mid Journey V7 is due to come out this week as well. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna need an extra cup or five uh, this week. In the meantime, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.